Welcome back to Inside Politics. Our guest today is uh, Steve Cavendish. He's the president and editor of the new Nashville Banner online news service. Uh, Steve, let's talk about the lone statewide race. Governor Bill Lee um, has no primary opponent. Uh, he has three little known and underfunded uh, Democrats running against him. Which one of the Democrats is likely to get the unenviable task of taking on a, a Tennessee governor. No Tennessee governor has lost a, second, a chance for a second term. I mean, it's sort of Memphis versus Nashville for this. Yeah, there's uh, two Memphis candidates. There's two Memphis candidates. J.B. Smiley is the is the better funded of the two candidates from Memphis. Jason Martin is a Hendersonville uh, doctor who's gonna uh, who's kind of centered his campaign around Nashville. Uh, flip a coin. Uh, I, I don't know. There's the neither neither campaign has a ton of money. There haven't been there haven't been there hasn't been much advertising. Hasn't been much outreach. Outreach. I, you know, who's going to be the sacrificial lamb? I have no idea. Governor Lee's been embroiled in this now weeks long controversy about the, the degrading comments made about teachers by his education advisor. Um, Larry, Dr. Larry Arn. Uh, the criticism and pushback on the governor has been bipartisan, but in terms of this election, does it really make any difference? You can't vote against Bill Lee except to abstain from voting, and if you do that, if you don't want to vote at all, otherwise you got to go in the Democratic primary. So we're probably not going to see any in impact on this, at least in August. I don't think so. And, and this is the, the this is sort of if you had a functional Democratic Party in Tennessee, uh, that would be the issue that, that that you would see really weaponized, particularly going into, into November. But I, don't, I just don't think there's enough push there for them to be able to make hay in any of the, the state house races, the state senate races, or the governor's race. For the first time, there are partisan school board races being held, I guess, in just about every county of the state. Uh, these, uh, has this change been, in your mind, better or worse in terms of creating voter interest and turnout? Uh, I, I think it's been worse. Uh, and, and a lot of voters that I've talked to, at least here in Nashville, have have said that it, it's kind of thrown off the rhythms of that of the cycle that you, typically the this was a summer election, uh, but you know these school board candidates had to had to start getting ready you know basically since the first of the year it's it probably cost them some candidates there was a teacher who was going to run or who, who wanted to run it in one primary but because of because of the rules about. Uh, being able to run for political office, couldn't couldn't do it during school year. It was just just sort of a mess. Uh, so much during the pandemic, schools were a battleground. Are we going to continue to see that? Are we going to have electric going out to throw the rascals out? Is it going to be a tough race for incumbents, or is it going to be or voters now looking ahead to what is going to happen in the future? And like COVID in general, they're kind of over it. I think it's kind of a I, I think it's a, a very noisy. Uh, minority that that really wants to stake out these extreme ex uh, positions in school board races, uh, and particular whether it's arming teachers or whether uh, it's about kind of COVID response. I think I think the vast majority of voters know that you know their teachers and their principals and the and their school system as having as hard a time dealing with COVID as they are. Uh, Nashville has four Metro Charter amendments that I mentioned earlier. Is there one that might be getting some opposition? It, it appears number one actually is the one that might get that. That's changes the process of how many voter signatures it takes to call a referendum to change the charter. Uh, you haven't seen anything public about that or paid advertising, but I hear there's a lot of a lot of movement about that or talk about it on social media. A lot, there's a lot of behind the scenes sort of, uh, sort of jockeying on it. Uh, you know, of the four, N numbers two, three, and four are very non-controversial. Uh, the, the especially the the third one, which clarifies some some language about the health department, would would allow them to to broaden the field of candidates who could who could actually be the director of public health. But back on that first one, uh, there there it kind of splits both ways. There are some there's some uh, this is this is a reaction to the for good government group trying to put an anti an some some fairly poorly written anti-tax am uh, amendments on the ballot. And lawsuits that came back. And the lawsuits which came for it, and because of the way the Davidson County Election Commission stepped up to defend it, you know, taxpayers are on the hook for about a million dollars worth of litigation. And, and I think that uh, that's that's where, the, that's why these were written. Uh, the the number that's there, 10 percent of registered voters, is, which is what the new threshold would be, is controversial in that uh, some grassroots organizations have said, hey, you know, we couldn't have gotten, for instance, the Citizen Oversight Board onto the ballot without it. Are Democrats in Davidson County perhaps dispirited, maybe not going to vote in their usual numbers because of what's happened with the city being divided up into three different districts? And might that have an impact first on getting a Republican somehow in November elected to our delegation, or any right now, or would it make 
make a difference in some of these down ballot the things that are still on the ballot right now? I don't think so. I, I think the I think there's a lot of Democrats that have been that have been especially energized, particularly by the Dobbs decision, uh, and and by a couple of other issues that are out there. Uh, you know. There's maybe not the candidate that they're behind, but I think I think there's some energy there. Is there any reason to pop some extra popcorn for Thursday night because it may t take a while to figure out who's going to win the fifth district in the Republican side? I, I think the fifth district is going to go is going to go a little bit later than than, than most. And we and we're probably um, the other races will probably be all be decided within about the first maybe five minutes or nanosecond after the well, polls are closed. The early votes should give us a pretty good indication on a lot of these races, whether it's the you know the Senate 19, uh, which is which is kind of the hot. Uh, the hot uh, race here in town, or maybe some of these house races, uh, we're going to know pretty early. Steve Cavendish, thank you so much for being with us. Appreciate your insights. We'll see how smart or not smart we were, and we'll <laughs> probably have you back on the show to talk about it again sometime soon. Let's do it. And thank you for joining us on Inside Politics. We'll be back here again for a future show. If you can't get the politics in the meantime, you go to the Channel Wild website, find my Capital New commentary there. There's a new commentary posted every Friday afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and we'll see you here next time. Goodbye.